Love Line, Coast to Coast. Yep, it is Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Wait a minute. Where's Dr. Drew, everybody? Oh, there he is. Where are you? Oh, did we talk about that? When did we talk about that? He said you're going to, going to go to the old buzz there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, Buzzaroo. I, uh, I tune out when you speak, Drew. N- no S. <laughs> I had no idea where you were. I was re- ready for you to come bounding into the studio any moment now. <laughs> My voice comes through. It's hysterical. All right, so you're, you're in Seattle. Yeah. Yeah, good times. You going to be around tomorrow? I will be there tomorrow, and uh, tonight I'm um, here in Seattle. It's great. It's as usual, uh, raining. Right. And uh, windy. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right. This town is really, this town is beautiful. I mean, give me a break. Yeah. I, I, was, I was just, uh, to me, to me I, I was talking to someone, they were complaining about the weather, and I immediately thought of the, the, the Los Angeles valleys in the summer. Yeah. I thought, you, have, you have no business complaining. Oh, yes. Oh. Every, everything is a shade of brown or orange, <laughs> and including the people. Yes, it is a nightmare. Christian Duguay is our guest tonight. Uh, also, Aries Spears is supposed to be here from Mad TV, although uh, Aries is not here yet, but uh, Christian is he- here. Hey. Speak right, lean up into the mic there, uh, Christian. How you doing, Dr. Drew? Hey. <laughs> okay, Drew, were, were you were, were you inside a, a, a 55-gallon oil drum? Or oh, what? you heard that too? See, they told me I was just the only one hearing that. <laughs> the echo? Nice. No, I hear oh. it, but it's it's not too bad. Only only okay. when you speak. All right, I won't speak loud. If I don't speak no, loud, no, I, I just I just mean speak. So please don't speak to, at all. Try to refrain yes. from talking yeah. tonight. Okay, great. Mad TV, of course, uh, on Fox, uh, eleven o'clock Saturday nights, and uh, they said it wouldn't last. See, Christian, we've had all the cast members throughout the years on the show, and each and every time, and Drew. T- if I'm wrong, um, tap your foot once, okay? <laughs> but each time during the commercial, they would all lean over, and this is starting about five years ago, and go, uh, this We're is about over. it. Yeah, this is about it. We're all yeah. looking for other gigs. I'm trying to get a uh, job back. At, I think the ore box is still open in Burbank. I'm see if I can get my gig back there. But everyone just said it's over, and then the next year they would come back, and they'd go, during the commercial, I go, hey, uh, not for on the air, but off the air, it's over. And then they would do it the next year, and uh, now we're going on five and a half. Well, we're going on six years. Yeah. Well, interestingly, it has been over for many of those people that we talked to. How dare you, Drew? Wait a minute. Everyone minute. except Nicole, Chris, right? Is Christian's mic uh, potted yeah, up? Yeah, I, I, I am. There, there, there you go, Anderson. Well, hey, Good times, go. buddy. Not Christian. Hmm. Well, this is well, first season, new, yeah. so... So, you know, he'll be gone next year, but this <laughs> Thanks, is Al. his year to establish himself, so we miss him. That's the way I look at it, because how can you be gone from something you never did? That's true. Right. No, I, the same the same people, uh, Nicole and uh, Deborah, Deborah and Aries, and, issues, yeah. uh, a lot of those people have been there for, for a while. A while yeah. Been there, yeah, Nicole's been there from the beginning, right? I think Deborah's yes. been there from Both the beginning, the too, two, right? Two that have been there since the first season, yeah. And right. Aries has been around for yeah, three I or four. Yeah, I think that Aries is in his third or fourth season. I'm not sure which one. We'd know if you were here. All right. Well, maybe when he does show up, we'll question him about that. All right, Drew, you ready to go? I am ready. Do you have control of the board over there? I've got control. Dave. Dave. Hello. You're 24. What's up? Yeah, um, I have a question. I don't know if this is normal, like, I'll go down on my girlfriend, and I, like, put my fingers in, and it's only happened a couple times. Is this one of those Gold Bond commercials? <laughs> gold Bond? No, it don't feel good in stings. It's different. I see. She's peed on me twice. I on- mean, we've had, we've gone all the way a whole bunch of times, but twice she's peed on me. You sure it's urine? Oh, I'm so sure. When you put your fingers in? Yes. True. When, when uh, you know, I watch a lot of nature films. When animals are attacked, oftentimes they urinate when they're scared. Like a skunk. as a defense mechanism. I'm right, like a skunk. Sure I'm not attacking her. I see. Okay. Yeah. She's not trying to repel him. And you just got urine on your fingers? Oh, uh, no. No, like on the bed. It's happened twice. Once in bed, once on the couch. How does she react? Well, I usually don't tell her until, like, we're done. Because I don't want to make her freak out. Well, you don't want her to stop, is what you're saying. Yeah, pretty but, much. But and, d- does like, she... Like, afterwards, she's really embarrassed. Sure. Like, she's right here. I mean, you can talk to her. Good idea. 
All yeah. right. I, I don't really believe this now. Well, That's we got to know why. Yeah. I don't care if you believe, but it's true. All right. All right. Well, it, happens. it happens. I happens. Like, I like. I appreciate <laughs> Dave's bravado, by the way. Yeah. Hello. I don't care if you believe it. Hello. Yes. Is this a urine queen? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah, I guess that's my name. What is your you're name? Pretty, you're, my name is she's pretty. She's pretty spirited about it. It's good. Yeah, well, you know, what happens, happens. Okay. <laughs> well, it's good, because a lot of women feel really humiliated when this happens. It's a common thing. It's a common thing both when there's certain kinds of stimulation, they have difficulty holding the urine, and it's common with orgasm. Are but you having orgasm? I don't orgasm? even know what's happening. Do, really? do you have really? orgasm at that point? Um, yeah, I'm, usually I'm trying. It's, it's happening. I'm about to have it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when it doesn't, when it's getting towards the I'm putting out a lot of effort to do it. That's when it happens. And afterwards, he's like, you know, you did this. And I see him. Hmm. It is pretty embarrassing at the time. Well, you think it's because you're pushing too hard? Maybe that's it. Sometimes when I try really hard to fart, I cramp <laughs> myself. <laughs> Yeah, you leak a little bit, huh? <laughs> well, it's more than a little bit. I mean, it's cramping myself. <laughs> but I, I'm saying yeah. I can sympathize. Uh, well, good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, all right. So maybe maybe don't push so hard. Why don't you just... Not push so hard? Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, just relax. And if you feel one coming on, let it escape naturally. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but look. Uh, I get to. Listen, I, I'm I'm actually more most concerned with how David's dealing. Dave's dealing with this thing. It sort of makes you, you know, he he, he treats you as though there's something wrong with you. Yeah. You know, he, you shouldn't be humiliated, humiliated for this. Yeah, it's embarrassing enough. She's fine with it, so he should be fine with it. Exactly. She's she's actually being real, kind of nice about it, spirited about it. He cause she could say, "Oh, this is too embarrassing. No more sex." How would he like that? <laughs> I don't know, Drew. <laughs> All right, but remember, you can only uh, flip those sofa pillows once, Pamela. Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. What's up? Um, I, my mom's dad's come out of the hospital, and she's been in the hospital for a while and everything. And um, What's well, she been in the hospital for? Um, she has CID. Do you know what that is? Pelvic inflammatory disease? No, it's P um, dissociative P identity disorder. It's Hang on, M what? MPD? MPD? MPD, okay. Yeah. And um, she's about to come out, and I'm six months pregnant, and she doesn't know yet. And I was wondering how I should tell her, like, you know what I mean? Like, yes. what would be the best way? All right. What does she have, Drew, that put her in the hospital? Multiple personality. Okay. Well, uh, tell the sympathetic person <laughs> that lurks within her that you're pregnant. And don't tell the cruel, vindictive one. Why didn't you tell her while she was still in the hospital? Because I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of scared. Well, like, Tell her, well, be wouldn't worried. it have been smart? Wouldn't it have been smart to do it when she's in a safe environment, when you have the supportive services available? She could help manage well, her feelings with the professionals well, around. Wait a minute, though, Drew. People don't want to drop any bombs on people that are already in the hospital. I, I, let, if if this oh, is just oh, lack oh, of oh. understanding, it's a great way to send somebody back to the hospital fast. Uh, okay, but I, I understand Pamela. I mean, Pamela's you know sixteen. She's confused. Her, her mom is uh, out of her mind. She's in a hospital. She doesn't want to go over there and freak her out anymore. I realize the timing isn't great. She may be heading right back to the hospital after that, but I, I don't want to beat up Pamela too much about it. Well, no, I don't want to beat her up. I just want her to understand that a structured environment, a safe environment, professional support is what your mom needs because she may fragment when you tell her this. So should I tell her, like, immediately right before she comes home, or should I tell her, like... Uh, when is she coming home? Um, she should be home next Saturday. Oh, okay, yeah. Go, go to the hospital, talk to the nurses, get, have someone accompany you into the room when you tell her, let the doctors know that this is what's going to happen, and do it before she leaves the hospital. Okay. Now, I, I'm not, now listen, if, if you should consult with the people that are taking care of her. If they tell you not to do it, don't do it. But talk, she, she's in a safe environment. She has a, a team that understands what's happening with her. You should be consulting with them. You shouldn't wait until she's out and then drop this on her. Okay. All right, hey, okay. Pamela? Uh -huh. Yeah. And what are you going to do? I'm I'm not really sure. I've been, like, my boyfriend's parents have been really supportive and everything, so mm -hmm. they're going to, like, help me. Where's your dad? He's at home. He's, like, okay. He's a good guy. I see. He's just a good guy? Does he help you out? Yeah, you well, him? I live with my boyfriend's parents, so. Okay, so you, your dad's a dynamite individual. Yeah. And mom goes into the hospital, and dad says, move in with the, the Bo's parents. Yeah, oh. pretty much. Yeah, so your dad's an a-hole. <laughs> right? Does he know you're pregnant? Huh? Does he know you're pregnant? Yeah, yeah, he does. Your dad so does. He's okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, what's he care? <laughs> I mean, he doesn't really. Yeah, why should he? It's just, uh, you have a thousand kids. Doesn't matter to him. <laughs> he's just in some, he's, where is he? What state is he in? He's in the same state. He's in Maryland, too. Oh, that's nice. 
<laughs> How far away is he? Uh, it's, uh, it's very refreshing to find a dad in the same state as her child. <laughs> <laughs> I, there was usually a forced segregation that went on, but uh, he's, in, he's in the same state? Yeah. All right, well, I may have been... Ten miles away. I may have been wrong about him. How often do you see him? Mm, not very often. Maybe once a month. All right. Okay. All right, so Pamela? Yeah. Uh, tell your mom when she's in, consult with her physicians okay. first and uh, in good times, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah Enjoy. Don't get pregnant again, please. <laughs> okay. You, you know what it's like? You know, let me tell you what Pamela's life is, is like. It's as if we were on like the 10 meter platform at the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Somebody told us, listen, you're going to have to do like a double axle with a somersault and you're going to have to nail it. And we went, and that's her life. And then someone went, now you're going to have to do it handcuffed with a uh, sack <laughs> over your head. Yes. And we're going to get you drunk. <laughs> yeah. Y you know, it's like, that's what her pregnancy is. She's living with her boyfriend's parents. Her mom's in the loony bin. Her dad's, uh, you know, down the road and couldn't give a rat's ass. Now she's pregnant. Like nice. as if things were, as if the the odds weren't stacked high enough against her. But she's as if we couldn't have predicted it. this. As if we couldn't have predicted this is where she'd go. Right. All right. Poor thing. I mean, you know. All right. And what and what do they do for Mom in the hospital with that multiple personality? Well, I, you know, I don't know what kind of treatment they're they're pursuing, but it's mostly about keeping her safe and contained and finding the right medications and uh, they they have a reintegration. Some of these people believe in reintegration, where they actually put these people through these very intensive uh, therapeutic processes where they like have seizures and they go nuts and they, they try to they take the predominant personality and try to integrate it with the other ones. No one believes that that necessarily works. Well, Has it ever? I mean, have they yeah, ever? Well, it's, some people claim it works, some people claim it's not the hoax, but it, it's very complicated and, and uh, there's even debate about whether MPD exists. I, I happen to believe it does. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the main treatments are containment and uh, medication rather than creating... Ev evocative kinds of therapies. All right, uh, Drew. Yeah. Nobody knows what evocative means. Not even <laughs> I mean, like stimulate, like 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 trying to bring out I something. Mean, you just better contain. I see. No, no, you evoke and you just contain stuff. Yeah, but is evocative connected to evoke? Yes. Thank you, Jack. Cindy. <laughs> Hi. You're 19. Yes. What's up? Um, I've been living with this guy for probably about six months, mm -hmm. and for the last, like, let's say, four. He hasn't been really interested in having sex. Mm-hmm. And um, he, he's, you know, he makes, like, deals, like, well, if I take you out, then we won't have sex for a month. What? Wow. <laughs> what a strategy. Uh, yeah. And if I buy you that fur coat, you won't blow me, right? <laughs> that's, uh, that's what it comes down to. I'm going to have my attorney draft something up. I don't trust you. <laughs> what do you say to him when he tries to make those kind of deal with you? I mean, I, I don't take him, like, seriously. Because the fact is, like, if I can provoke him enough, he will have sex with me. How do you do that? Um, <laughs> just, I try to, you know, touch him or, you know, go down on him. And if I can get that far, it usually... I mean, if you, if, if he'll let you... Right, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like a struggle. It's kind of like wrestling to get down there. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've, I've had the... Oh, no, wait a minute. It's exactly the opposite. That's right. <laughs> I was picturing <laughs> wrestling, but I was realizing, no, that was me wrestling for the girl's mouth. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's true. Like, you know, for, for me to get a, a BJ, it's like when a, uh, a patient has a seizure, epileptic seizure, and you try to shove your wallet in his mouth so he doesn't swallow the tongue. It's that kind of thing. Is that, is that difficult? Yeah, they're moving around. Their eyes are rolled back. Their, their mouth is chomping down. And that's where I try to get my penis in. Before they stop breathing. You get hurt doing that. You could, but it's worth it. The, the one out of every ten times it works. Cindy? Uh-huh? Why, why don't you find yourself a new guy? Is, I mean, yeah. He, I, tries, he, tries, he, um, he actually followed me down. I, I'm going to school in Arizona. Mm -hmm. I'm from L.A. And he keeps saying, oh, it's because um, I'm not happy here. I'm bored here. I'm not going to school. And He said that? Yeah. He's like, well, guys are really sensitive about these kind of things and... What kind of things? Like, like his environment. Like, he's not he's not happy with what's going on in his life. So, he oh, hold like on. What, what is he a goddamn panda bear? <laughs> I mean, his <laughs> yeah. environment is not right. So right. he's depressed. So, he so he's not going to have sex. 
That's ridiculous. <laughs> Every That's one guys my, have more sex. I, listen, you're you're in Van Nuys. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That place is a dump, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I grew up in North Hollywood, which is the uh, dump <laughs> that is just east of Van Nuys. Yeah, I and, went. I went. High school and it was Hollywood. Yeah, right. It yeah. sucked, right? Yeah. Okay. Every one of my friends was miserable, depressed, uh, unemployed, and uneducated. All they did was screw. <laughs> that was therapy. No, it, it was booze and screw. That's that's the things they look forward to. Nice. Y- yeah. Thank you. BNS. Then BNS. Get rid of this guy, Cindy. Okay. I don't trust him. <laughs> well, but I, I don't know. If we can be that clear about it. But there's something very, very wrong with this whole situation. And unless he can sort of get it together for himself, I, I don't see that the relationship's going to go anywhere. No. Not at all. Although he did fa- Why did he follow her to Arizona if he didn't want anything? Have you asked him no. that? No. Well, uh, well, let me ask her. I'll get her back. Cindy. Uh-huh? Why did he follow you to Arizona if he didn't want any sex? Uh, he says he loves me. I mean, but, like, he just doesn't want to... How old is he? He's 21. He could is be... Is he doing anything? Could be gay. his life? Yeah. Excuse me? Is he doing anything with his life at all? He's working. As what? He's doing retail. Okay. Mm. All right. Dump him. <laughs> you you go down go down to that Van Nuys Sherman Oaks Park. You find yourself a drifter better than him. <laughs> you know the place I'm talking about, right? Yeah. All right. Where are we going here, Drew? Oh, a second, my computer just glitched. Oh. Anyway. Well, okay. Here I'll it is. Here we, here we go. Here we go. All right. All right. All right. Sean. Sean. How are you doing? You're on with Christian DeGay from Mad TV. How you, How you doing, Sean? Saturday nights, yeah. Fox, of course, 11 o'clock. Sean, what's up? Uh, well, okay. Way back when I was a child, my family divorced, and I was told never, that I shouldn't see my father because he was sexually abusive and physically abusive to my mom, right? Mm-hmm. And so we left the relationship, and around, see, four years ago, he called and said that he wanted to come back out with us, you know, and wanted to be our father again, and I kind of blew him off because everything I heard about him, you know, I thought, you know, he was just full of S, and so... I didn't want to go to him. Well, now, uh, four years later, my brother called him up and actually went over there and said that he was actually completely different from what my mom had said. He was a really nice guy, extremely hospitable, and was really sad that he I wasn't there. And so I went over there the next day. We get there, he told me that he'd been counting the days, that he'd missed me and everything, and everything was just great. You know, he was really glad to see me. And it was like handing out money and everything so he could get me to stay there. And then we ended up drinking and smoking some pot, and I was a little worried about that because he seemed like he may have been playing acting or just trying to cater to be my friend. Now I'm kind of worried about that. He was giving you money? Yeah, straight up 40 bucks from him. Now, was he giving you like five bucks for every 15 minutes you hung out, or was he just going to give you 40 for the night? Well, no, he came, when I got there, right, he says, well, you need some spending cash. So, wait, what, is 40 bucks enough? And I told him, you know. Okay, let's just like, look at just the, the the surface issues here. Yeah. One is, listen, serial murders. Uh, Ted Bundy was a nice guy. He was a great guy, by yeah. all accounts. Still is. Oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. That's why we allow him to have children. He must procreate. Oh, Such don't, nice guy. don't get me. Do you guys all, okay, Drew, see, this is what <laughs> I get, this is what I get warned about. But do you guys know that Ted Bundy, Sired a kid while he was in jail. While he was on death no. row, he knocked up some broad. Did she have the kid? Yep. 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 Ted Bundy, this guy, this animal, killed at least uh, 20 college age and younger women who just tortured them and, and controlled them. He did these. I mean, the, the things Ted Bundy did to his victims are, you know, right out of uh, Silence of the Lambs, basically. Right. And uh, not to uh, middle-aged uh, prostitutes. Even then, not a good thing. But yeah, slightly more forgivable, let's be honest. <laughs> but the, we're talking about 13, 14, 15-year-old girls, uh, you know, grade school and, I mean, uh, junior high and high school and college girls. I mean, this guy was a savage and we let this guy get laid while he was in prison. How? After he'd effed, raped, killed and then effed again all of these young women. We let him get laid again in prison. What the F is going on? How does that work? He he was in prison and he, he was on death row for a long time and he kept getting these stays of execution and he he married some crazy broad and they let her visit and he nailed her while while she was visiting him and she's pregnant and now there's a twenty year old twenty bu- years old? Well this is nineteen eighty one. Uh, 
maybe 19-year-old yeah. doing, the, doing the pregnancy math there. What are you in the belly for, Drew? 15 months? Whatever, Adam. Whatever it is. The point is... is I, there's wouldn't a, want, I wouldn't want to call you wrong. There's a 19-year-old <laughs> girl running around now who is Ted Bundy's daughter. Who Thank is, God it's a girl. Yeah. Then <laughs> Think about the gene pool. Ted, you got yeah. Ted's sperm mixed with the egg of the broad crazy enough to uh, visit him in prison, marry him, and have sex with him after he was... Uh, you know, con after he was convicted for all these heinous crimes. Oh, what are we doing as a country? When is it okay to put somebody down? How many people you got to rape and kill and torture? How anyway, many? to get back to the all point, right, Sean, a lot of people that are egregious or awful people are very nice when you first meet them. But let's just look at what your dad is up to. You're 17 years old. He's having you drink and smoke pot with him. He's an awful parent. If nothing else, he's an awful parent. Well, when I was talking to and and he's bribing you for a relationship. And why would your mom make up stuff like sexual abuse? Well, my mom's kind of on another path herself. Our family's not exactly a stable one. Well, I, Sean, let's I, just I, think I, about I the kind of person. That. Who would she pick to have a relationship with? Uh, think about that. Ted Bundy Jr. Right, Ted Bundy. There you go. But but listen, Adam, we're a bunch of screwballs Sh Sean, I understand that. But as, as screwy <laughs> as the family is, people don't normally tell their young son that they were sexually abused by this man. I mean, that's not the kind of thing you make up mm -hmm. because there's a certain amount of dignity involved with it. You, you right. know what I mean? And I know your mom's a piece of work. But uh, this, I don't, I don't trust this guy. Yeah, neither would I. The thing, I don't know what to think about it, though, because I, I really want to have a father relationship with him, but I don't know what kind of thing he's looking to get out of it. Well, who knows, but it, it can't be good. All right. Yeah, I, I mean, you just think I tell my mom about it because she didn't. She doesn't know that I went there. Well, what what kind of shape is your mom in? Uh, constant fighting with my father, and we're kind of like, well, we got into a huge fight back a while back, and now she's decided that as soon as I graduate uh, from high school, she's going to kick me out, and whether I can pay for an apartment or not. Oh boy, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's too bad you can't get pregnant. You'd be pregnant by now, <laughs> really. You'd have twins. But he can get someone pregnant. Yes. Okay, Sean. Mm -hmm. Let me yeah. give you. Let me give you your uh, your objectives in life. A. Don't get anyone pregnant. Damn right. B. Thank you. Limit the amount of gay porn you make. I know you're looking for a quick buck. <laughs> C. Too late. Right off. Oh, too late. He no, said. No, he's kidding. <laughs> right off that pack of circus freaks you currently know as a family. It's the saddest advice I have to give, but I swear to God, I, I give it every night and not bat an eye. If your family's a mess, write them off. If your mom's out of control, if your stepdad's abusive, if your real dad's giving you, uh, you know, a tall boy and uh, some reefer, and, there's nothing uh, you can do. Paying about you it. by the hour, these people are a mess, and they're only going to bring you down further. Just step mm -hmm. back, sign off with these people. At least for a few years, you got to get your grades going. You got to go off to college, or you got to get a good gig. Move out of the house. Stick with your friends. Get your own life going, and then when you have your own life, then you can evaluate there what to do with your family. But not when you're living under their roof. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. Christian Duguay is our guest tonight. He's from uh, Mad TV, of course, on Fox <laughs> Eleven o'clock Saturday nights. Aries Spears is supposed to be here, but uh, Aries is not here. Aries, where are you? Are you listening? Well, if he is, he'll be here, and if uh, not, we got Christian. And we'll be back after this. Yep, love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Christian DeGay is our guest tonight. He's from uh, Mad TV. He's one of the rookies on the uh, Mad TV <laughs> roster. Of course, uh, Fox on Saturday nights at 11 o'clock. Drew? Hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you ready to rock? I'm trying not to talk like you instructed. Yeah, you're me. doing a great job. <laughs> Here's uh, Chris. Chris, you're 27. Yes, I am. What's up? Well, um, hold on one second here. Uh, just want to say, first of all, Christian, hello, big fan uh, of Matthew. What the? Wait a minute. What was he doing? Should I get no, him again? Yeah, just put him on hold. Phone. I yeah. thought he was like uh, doing a radio show hello? or something. Hello. Chris, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay. Drew and Adam, I called probably about three or four years ago. You gave me some great advice, started me on the road to therapy, worked through a bunch of stuff. Great. Um, now I'm calling back. <laughs> Basically, my uh, 27 came out to my parents when I was about 18. They had a really hard time with it, uh, a lot of struggle growing up. 
They've sort of started to come around the past few years. They're starting to say that they accept me and they love me, etc. And I just don't feel anything back toward them. I don't despise them. Yeah. Like, I feel very neutral toward them. Uh huh. Makes sense. And I just, I don't know. You know, Chris, there's there's a good book out there now uh, that I was just looking at this evening. It's called Children of the Self Absorbed. And it talks about grow- what it's like to grow up with parents that really don't value your separateness, value who you are as a separate person and your emotional needs, and what it's like to be an adult having been raised in that environment, and then what you can do about it. So, And I would suggest you look at that book, because it gives you some exercises that will help you deal with your parents. There's also one called Look at Me, I'm Gay, which is... <laughs> I think that I wouldn't, be a bad, wouldn't be a bad uh, title for a book, though. Hey, hey Chris? Yeah? Do you, uh, do you... Now, you know our theory about coming out to parents. Sure. Uh, uh, when you're well, young. Now. Did you, did you want to bust their balls a little when you came out to them at 18? Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> well, what I mean is, is um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people who call this show who come out to their parents at a relatively young age... Uh-huh. And 18 is relatively you're usually, young. It's usually the 15-year-olds, though, that are asking us. Right. Let's face it. All right, but well, th- this is on the border. They they, yeah. they they do it because they know it's going to kill their parents. They know their right. parents are going to hate it, and they want to kind of twist a knife in them right. because they're angry with them. Well, let, let me rephrase. I, I didn't come out. I, I It just sort of it came out. It, they just found out. Exactly. We're in the middle of an argument, actually. So it's not like I made a concerted effort. To, and, and you blew your dad? Uh, no. No. Are you just in the middle of an argument and you just yelled you're a gay? <laughs> um, I, it was 10 years ago. Um, I see. And I were arguing. All right. Okay. It came up and I didn't <laughs> deny it finally. I see. Okay. I've been doing so for like three years. And did it, did it Never screw? Never blew my dad, thank you. Did it screw, uh, did it screw with your mom? I mean, who? who? Um, yeah, my mom... My mom's the uh, dominant mother, passive father thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's what um, turns you gay. I think so. And, and um, she had the whole religious <laughs> stance and the fact that if any of my grandparents found out, it would absolutely kill them. And just a lot of guilt from the get-go. Right, right. Is she um, Jewish? Yeah, no. No. So I'm probably more Jewish than she is by association. But right. <laughs> How are they saying it's okay now? They're being supportive? What are they, what are they saying? Uh, well, they're not being... Uh, well... Comparatively, they're being more supportive. They're just like, you know, you're gay, the end, you know. We you don't want to talk about it. Exactly. I see. And uh, it's, you know, and I don't know, and I still have a lot of stuff going on. Like, there's still a lot of, you know, that 10 years is just still playing in my mind. And I don't, you know, part of me wants to just write it off and start a new chapter and go on. Yeah. The other half is like, you know, they, they really sucked at parenting for about a decade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I can't let it go that easily. Well, let me... Don't uh, let it go. It's fine. All right, but Drew and uh, Christian, would you agree with me uh, on this, which is you you will probably never get the satisfaction you require from your parents. Absolutely. In Uh, fact, this book I recommended, one of the big sort of goals of the book is to help you let go of that fantasy that they'll be the kind of parents you always wanted, because they'll never be. They are who they are. You talking about look at me, I'm gay? Yeah, that one. (laughs) The, the point is, is they ain't going to change a whole lot, and they certainly, sure as hell, ain't going to change the past. Right. And they will never sufficiently apologize for it. Drew, your parents haven't sufficiently apologized for the past, have they? <laughs> I know mine haven't. I know yeah, mine haven't. How can they when they really don't know what they did? No. That's, uh, they'll they'll they never don't. know. They don't. Mine oh. will when I'm done building the Nuremberg t- style <laughs> set I've been working for. I've been working on this for years. We're going to put uh, my parents and Drew's parents on, this, on trial. Oh, yeah? That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to get one of your folks in? I'd love it. I'd love it. Yeah, I got a couple extra put seats. Put my mom up there. The, the, the deal is, is you have to be okay with this with yourself. Stay with your therapy. Keep doing your work. But don't expect them to change or give you that much satisfaction. It ain't going to happen. All right. All right. Where are we going here, Drew? Your computer down? No, it's fine. No, right, everybody. Right. Go to Jason. Jason, you're 19. Yes, sir. What's up? First of all, I like to give Adam mad props, but um, I am 19 years old and I'm at this crowd fe- fever. Yeah, can you turn your radio down. Oh yes, can you turn the radio down? I met this girl. Yes. And um, I had a one night stand with her. Mm-hmm. And now I got like a powerful like discharge when I pee. I see. A discharge when you pee or a pain when you pee? Like pain. Do you know what that could be from? 
Uh, Why don't I buy this? But uh, let's just go on with it. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, that, that is a sign of a sexually transmitted disease. That is sort of a classic symptom, is having a discharge and or pain when you urinate. Uh-huh. So you have to see a doctor. And usually when people have one STD, they have others. Really? So it's, a, oh, yeah, it's, it's sort of, it's sort of the, often the case that if you get one, you get a couple. Well, at least ho- you're going to get one. a hoe. Well, you're going to get, yeah, you're usually going to get warts at least True, with how whatever How dare you, you agree with that, <laughs> that horrible Well, statement. no, I mean, people, are, people that are sexually active and pass diseases around tend to have multiple partners, and that tends to be the issue. I, and, I, know, uh, a guy, I know a guy who got, and I may screw one of these up, but he got, like, gonorrhea, syphilis, and crabs one night, one chick. Nice. Yeah, not a, not a prostitute, nothing like that, just, you know, kind of one night stand. Three things. Uh, well, I, like I said, it's very nice, common. Huh? And in fact, more hat, than two... Hat trick. Mo- more ahead. than two, and it's thought that your HIV risk is really going up. Yeah, it so makes sense. Really, it's, well, you've got to really pay attention. And uh, he needs to be treated, be treated right away, because this can have lots of complications, and uh, I suggest you get in right away. Brian? Brian? Caller goes by hey. the name of Brian? Yes, there is. 28. What's up? Hey, you guys. Um... First of all, I want to tell you guys, I haven't heard you guys for about six months cause, or three months because you've been off the air here in um, Central California, Modesto, Sacramento. Hmm. But. Um, oh, yeah, I know. Okay, you know. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> yes. Dude, you have some of the, you have some real stories that come straight from Earth. I, I just can't believe it. Well, uh, thanks. Uh, straight from Earth, dude. All right. Straight from Earth to your ears. <laughs> I can't believe you guys answered my call. All right. Well, let's get to it because we're going to hang up on you. That's fine. Uh, earlier in the 90s, I got um, I was, I got hooked on speed, and I started doing speed, and I snorted it, smoked it, shot it, ate it, whatever I had to do. Mm-hmm. And nowadays, I drink like one or two beers a night, and I was wondering if maybe... I mean, I got a regular job and stuff, and I work full time. But I was just wondering if maybe those one or two beers a night, or one beer, or whatever, are are an, uh, what, uh, a substitution for the speed. So you never got involved in recovery. Never once. I just quit cold turkey and ice. All right. Well, you're you're just you're. Uh, it's all the same biology. Whether you've selected speed or Valium or marijuana or alcohol, the same part of the brain is being affected, and there will be <laughs> you know, progressive... True, as you said that, I was just sitting there, think, laying here and going, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're going like, Valium, alcohol, <laughs> weed, I'm going, yeah. Dr. Sounds Drew. Like fun. Yeah, it's a good time. Dr. Drew. Yeah. If, if, can you imagine the amount of speed I would do during a day, like $120 worth, $100 worth? Yeah, you were able to stop the speed, but you still smoking pot? No, not even. And, and well, you're just using alcohol. But it will progress. Wait it, a minute. The, Are you relaxing when you when you drink? I mean, is it, do you need it? Have you tried not doing it? Well, uh, maybe two or three, two nights a week, maybe I don't drink. Are you on other medication? No. Nothing? Not at all. Brian, how did you, you get off that much uh, speed? I, well, you know what happened? I couldn't get any dope from my from my regular dealer, and, like, I just, I just... I just got pissed off, and I was like, if you've never been addicted to speed, you, you may not be able to understand it, but I was, like, looking for dope all over town on a bicycle. He did, yeah. Dude, I'm sorry. All right, hey, Brian? Yep. Uh, here's what I have to say about this. Your one or two beers a night is obviously no big big deal, but uh-huh. you're calling this show, and you sound like, you sound in worse shape than one or two beers a night. Really? There's something going on. <laughs> so it may be more than one or two beers a night. Of course it is. Of course it is more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one, yeah. Or, one or two pony cakes a night. <laughs> oh. you're, you're back on the road to addiction. Yeah, no, I you're there. You, you, if, if, listen, if, you, if once your brain has been conditioned to a certain level of these chemicals, there is no going back. A switch has been thrown in the brain that once thrown must be treated or you will you will bounce from one chemical to the next or extreme thrill seeking behaviors to the next until treatment is instituted and well, it will progress and get worse there will be mounting consequences with time true are you sure you're not just trying to drum up business for yourself uh, this I mean, is categorical truth well w- w- how are you going to dethrow the switch so to speak in treatment that's what the that's what the treatment is about 
that that's the whole deal. I mean, if you look, there's a guy named Alan Lesher that heads up the National Institute of Health, and that he has this big. If you look on his website, there's a brain with a giant switch in it, and that's where he looks at the great concept for how addiction works. Yeah, well, that's once the switch is once the switch has been thrown, there's no going back. And this, he's definitely had it thrown. Right. It, my uh, my website has uh, a penis napping. <laughs> is there a switch on it? No, no switch. <laughs> just just napping. That's that's my sign. Yeah. That's the uh, that's the Corolla Crest. All right, <laughs> it's a penis on it. Uh, taking a break. <laughs> We're going to take ourselves a uh, break. Speaking of breaks, uh, Christian Duguay is here from Mad TV, Fox, eleven o'clock Saturday nights. Doctor Drew is over there in uh, Seattle, thinking about uh, drawings of uh, switches and heads. When we come back, Drew, who are we going to speak to? Line five. You do Jordan. it. Do it. Okay. He needs a plan so he can break up her parents. Who, she needs a plan who can break, so she can break up her parents who seem to fight nonstop. That's horrible. What else? You wanted, there's have? only one of the choice, which is Angela. When she was 14, a friend made her do things to him. Yeah, Hurts that, now. Yeah, that's good. All right. All right. We'll uh, talk to Angela after this. Yep. Love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Christian Duguay is here tonight. He is uh, one of the newest cast members of Mad TV. Saturday nights at uh, 11 o'clock on Fox. And let's speak to Angela, who's 16. Angela? Hi. What's up? Um, well, like, I, two years ago I met this guy, and I thought he was really nice. I was 14, and he was 13. And, um, and I started going out with him, and every time I would see him, I didn't go to the same school as him, so every time I would see him... He'd really pressure me into, like, giving him head or, like, doing that kind of stuff, like, rent or hand jobs or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and finally, after about four months of going out, um, he snuck over to my house. He snuck over night, to your house, yeah. And I wasn't really expecting it. And, um, and he kind of just was totally, if you don't have sex with me tonight, I'm going to tell everyone at our high school that you're you're having sex with me and that you're and that you're a slut and all this kind of stuff. That's ironic. Mm. So if you do have sex with him, he won't tell people you're a slut, <laughs> but if you don't, he will. How does that work, by the way, when you don't go to the same high school? Does he just uh, show up with a bullhorn one day at a nutrition? Sign, maybe? I had a lot. Sandwich I'm board? Yeah. Well, Hire a drifter to walk <laughs> around out front? Like that guy at Little Caesar shaking the sign? <laughs> right. No, I went to um, I went to a middle school, and then my mom worked at the high school that I was supposed to go to. Mm -hmm. So I went to a different high school, so I didn't really know anyone. And everyone from my middle school went to that high school Wh that my mom worked at. Which is go, which is the one he went to? Yeah. Ah. And I go to that high school now. I, go to I see. So now. that that was his angle. Yeah. Even then, by the way, these uh, and, and I know they seem real serious to to everyone at the time because we get a lot of these calls, which is. You know, the uncle gives his nephew a BJ, and he says, if you don't let me give you another one, I'm going to tell your parents. Right. Not a great threat. You it, know seem, I mean? it seems real at that age. It right? seems real, I, I know, but if you really just get some distance from it and do the math, who's really going to get it here? <laughs> I think the distance is age, though. I don't right. Like, the, the problem is that, like, after we did, like, he, I finally I gave in because I was really scared. I mean, I was well, but the question is, why, why were you such a good victim? Why did he know he had a great victim on his hands here? I don't, you know, that's, that's like one thing that I'm really wondering is that, you know, I mean, I have really great parents, you know. All right. Where were they mm -hmm. at the time? <laughs> they were in bed. It was in the middle of the night. <laughs> and he just, you know, banged on the window kind of thing? Yeah. It's a one-story house. It's not that's, that hard to get into. It's, uh, it's going to make a one hell of an RV salesman uh, one day, just uh, negotiating yeah. that uh, through the window. <laughs> <laughs> on a Tuesday night at uh, twelve thirty in the a.m., you know, wow! And so he came in and had sex with you. Uh huh. And like, and afterwards, it was really kind of scary because I couldn't handle it because like sex is a really mature thing; it's for mature adults. And I wasn't totally wasn't ready for for sex. And and after that, I broke up with him, and he claimed that he was suicidal, and he mm. and he would sit quite, around and quite a guy. Yeah, he's got a lot of angles. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, Angela, how's this affecting you now? Um, like, I cannot have a relationship with a guy. Like, my longest relationship since then was five days. Have you been treated for this? No. Have you looked into it, perhaps? 
No. Like, you I, thought I, about that? I've been kind of nervous about it. Like, I don't know. Why? Really, why? Do you want your yeah. parents to know? No. <laughs> I, I really don't. Like, if... Yeah. I'm well, a third-day student. I, I'm in, like, all advanced classes. Well, do, do you feel That's, like you were raped? Um, yeah. <laughs> well, sure, you were. You were, let's well, face it. I mean, you know, there's rape, and then what I call rape light. This is well, uh, but rape he, light. He th coerced and it's forced. It's also I'm coming out with. Nice. Yes, go ahead. But I, I, I really think you ought to look into getting some treatment for this, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to include your family. You just need to go talk to someone, and that will be confidentially held between you and the treating person. But, like, you yeah. well, yeah. where would I go, though? That's the thing. Is that where, Are you in school now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in school, yeah. I'm a sophomore Does in high school. <laughs> high school. Does the high school have counselors? Yeah, but they're, I, like, I've talked to the counselor before and things oh, like her, didn't get You don't trust them. Her mom, trust. her mom still works there, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a disaster. <laughs> I would kill myself if my dad worked at my high school. I had my mom working at my elementary school. Really? It was awful. Oh, my oh, God. It's horrible. She, she knew did. everything. It, that's horrible. She comes out and finds me and, like, gives me lunch and everything. It's really annoying. <laughs> yeah. oh. She wants you to know she's there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right, who can uh, she talk to? Okay. By, by the way, yeah. that's not necessarily great parenting, that level of intrusion. Mm -hmm. they, they need you to think about them as perfect parents, but in fact, they may not be so perfect. Like my the dad. That they, my huh? dad's really nice. Like He's like yep. the greatest guy in the world, but my mom's really intruding. Like After swim practice, she'll come over to the, over to the um, swimming, over, over to the pool deck, and she'll make sure that I'm swimming. And yeah. Have you told her to stop? Um... Yeah, I have, but she still does it. Like, she's, that's that's probably what's happened here. I mean, that's why that guy could take such advantage of it. And you. she's going to give you an eating disorder. Do you have an eating disorder? No. Sure. Yeah. You sure? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Well, keep an eye on that. There's where mom is no, no going. Well, yeah. she, like, brings me... I mean, she's, like, super cautious about what I eat. I mean, no. I'm not overweight. No, that's my point. Do you have a brother? I have two older brothers, yeah. She's going to turn them gay. Well, they're already... Like, one's married and one has a girlfriend. Aha, beards. Very <laughs> clever, those two. Beards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Angela. Uh huh You got to get yourself, you got to talk to somebody. And and and, it, and I don't know who, Drew, who, if it's outside of school. Uh, how about your, do you have a doctor? No, oh, I just put it on hold. Do you have a doctor, Angela? It's a family doctor. It's like All right, goes, th that person, if he tells anyone about this, is accountable to you and illegal if they share information. You're 16, you're, you're entitled to confidential health care, and you've got to make it clear to that person you expect it to be confidential and help them refer you to a mental health professional. Go from there. All right, Lauren? And, and and by the way, these episodes don't have to ruin your life, everybody. No, no, they, especially they, one like that. They ain't great, but we've that that is a uh, two on the love line scale of. And, the and by the way, the bigger scale. issue with Angela is her intrusive mom. Right, Lauren. Oh, hi. Hey, you're thirty. What's up? Um, first I want to say both of you guys um, love the show and think it's informative. Thank you. Um, entertaining. Great. I'm on a speakerphone, which I'm not used to, so this is weird. Well, can you pick up the receiver? Yeah, but I'm afraid I'll cut it off. Uh, just pick it up and put it... Just pick it up. Okay. Here's where it hangs there? up. Okay. There you go, It works. I'm, I'm not into high technology. No kidding. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like a telephone. Yeah. Anyway. Pretty high tech. Yeah. Um, don't, get, don't get carried away on us. <laughs> don't cut yourself on the uh, side of that soup can and make sure the yarn doesn't get tangled <laughs> strangle up. Strangle yourself with a cord. Right. Anyway, my question is, um, I guess... It's called a fetish if someone's into, um, like, when you're making love, they want you to wear leather, or they're into, like, you wearing high heels or boots or stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. that would be a fetish. Could be. So, what do you think about that? Is this your Tell boyfriend? Us. Yeah, well, I'm in a new relationship, and um, we're, you know, physically intimate, and he, um, you know, told me that he likes these little boots that I wear, and he wanted me to put them on when we make love. Right. And, and then he also said he wanted me to wear, like, my leather jacket, and <sighs> like, he liked the way leather felt against his skin. <laughs> so I didn't wow. know. I haven't done that, but I, I just don't know. Is this like... It's actually a good, it's a good instinct on your part, because once you let those floodgates open, it's not going to stop with the leather jacket, I promise. Right. It starts with the boots, and uh, then you have, like, a mop handle halfway up your <laughs> rear end. And you're wearing, uh, like, a big toucan beak. And you're in, like, a half a, a horse's outfit. And, and you got that sandwich board that uh, 
that uh, the drifter was wearing in front of the high school. <laughs> on, yeah, it, it does. They do tend to spin out of control. But yeah. can't can't someone be because he, um, it you know, is so normal? Yeah. And he wants to break out a little bit. I well, I don't know. I mean, that's why I'm wondering: can't someone be normal and they will have this little side to them? Yes. It, this is all little. little. Th- this is fine as long as he doesn't little. just keep going. Yeah, and we don't think it's going to stop here. And yeah. to have a little bit of expression is one thing, but to have something that's necessary for sexual functioning is a fetish, and that is a preoccupation that takes the focus away from the physical encounter, away from the in- intimacy, and onto these inanimate experiences. Right. And that's not so healthy. Right. This, this should not be the engine that uh, powers the sex. It should be the cruise control or the right. CD player. It is a nice little perk, a nice option. But if you can't get out of the driveway without it, you got a problem. There's yeah. a good car analogy there, Drew. Nice. Thank you. Very good. Christian Duguay is our guest tonight. She waited 70 minutes for that. Mad TV. <laughs> I know. Uh, he told me what to do with, with the car. <laughs> we'll uh, take a break. We'll be back after this. Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. Dr. Drew is over there coming to us uh, from Seattle tonight. Christian the Duguay. Buzz. That's the Buzz, right. yes. Christian Duguay is our guest Hello. tonight. He's from Mad TV, 11 o'clock, Saturday nights. Fox, fifth season, <laughs> sixth season, or going into the sixth season? This is the end of the sixth season. It's coming up. Wow. See? And now people aren't talking like it's going to go away. No. Which, which is the kiss of death. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> you see? Right. Start talking about how I it's uh, not going to be around next year. Okay, Drew, you're back in studio tomorrow night. Uh, absolutely, I am tonight. I'm up in Seattle with the buzz. And Adam, remember when I told you about the universality of bad coffee at radio stations? Mm-hmm. This, this, I really learned that up here at the buzz. That when I went to get some coffee, I'm in Seattle. I'm in the coffee capital of the country, and just crappy, crappy coffee. But they've improved it. They've got those little coffee dispensers. You know, you push the button and it gives you the coffee. Right. It spits it right? out. Yeah, it's not, it's not bad. The coffee's not bad, but uh, no, no condom, no, no cream, no uh, powder, no nothing. Oh, true. Nothing. Yeah, I told you you have to pack your non dairy creamer. Oh my God! Just you like non dairy creamer? Not anything. Drew, <laughs> Drew does. Drew, <laughs> Drew enjoys, and this is only because he has low self esteem. If you have <laughs> something, that, if you have fresh cream uh-huh. in a in a ladle over here, and a thing that says whitener. On it, not even paint. White paint, literally coffee whitener, <laughs> powdered whitener, which uh, comes from like Smart and Final. Mm-hmm. He will choose that over the cream, won't you, Drew? Well, only when I'm on radio, though. I, I, I don't feel like I'm broadcasting if I am not have a crappy cup of coffee in my hand. But the what? coffee here is good. No, oh, please. Oh, I think oh. it's good, but I'm not a connoisseur. Drew, you, uh, Drew, would take a swing at you if he was here in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Drew, do you have a call lined up, or you just want to oh, complain about no, coffee? No, yes, I night? do. I've got Joe here. Joe, you're 15. What's up? Oh, hey, Adam. What's up? You rule. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, um, whenever I have sex with my girlfriend, she always, like, you know, she kind of fakes it. Fakes what? The orgasm? Yeah. How but, do you know? Well, she tells me. Oh, okay. Well, why does she bother faking if she knows that you know that she's faking it? Um. Well, it's just, I don't know. She, like... She just doesn't seem like... Oh, Joe. If you're going to give a bogus call, at least have your story straight. <laughs> Please. Oh. Please. Jesus oh. Christ. What is, this, what is this world coming to? And, you know, Drew, you yeah. attacked me for hating teens. But do you see, <laughs> do you see my point now? Excellent point. Thank oh. you. Patrick? Yeah. You're 22. What's up? Hey, um... I just recently graduated from college, and uh, I played college football, and of course, at the level of competition, I, I felt that I needed to use steroids. What position did you play? A middle linebacker. And where where did you play? Uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I got recruited to play football there when I was in high school. Uh, did you? Yeah. Did you? Well, actually, did you I mean, have good grades. Ca- no, Cal Poly no. Uh, Pomona, actually. Oh, Cal Poly Pomona. But not Cal Poly Slow, as uh, they call. <laughs> Why do you guys? You know, ever once? Do you guys still like play Nebraska once a year? <laughs> no. 
I mean, no, Central Washington and uh, teams like that. But di didn't Cal Poly used to play like, uh, you know, Nebraska every once in a while? No, uh, just one double-A teams pretty much. Who did, they I mean, that, who did you guys play that killed you every year? It wasn't every year Central Washington. No, no, there was there was a big there was a big. All right, well, whatever. Anyway, all right, we'll what? just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> but you're on Cal Poly slow, right? Yeah, I recently graduated. Okay, and so you got on the juice. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, well, I've noticed some kind of well weight loss. Of course, I mean I I still hit the gym and I'm still pretty strong, but I've noticed weight loss and actually. Uh, eating disorder, in a sense. I mean, I have to force myself to eat sometimes. I mean, I know I'm hungry, and it. This, this it, is and, still on steroids or now off steroids? No, I am now off steroids. I use the creatine and the and the Andro Six, and so and, so you're you were addicted to how your body looked when you were on steroids? No, no, no. It was all about the the competition and. Well, what are you doing now that you need your body? Why are you still on creatine? I, I work out. I, I majored in criminal justice, and I am going into the correctional field. And all, right, all right, but why don't you just lift weights and eat right? And, well, you know, I mean, I'm not. Day. I don't feel that I was addicted to steroids. I mean, the only reason at the time that I took them was to compete at the college uh, level. I got that. I was just wondering about the after effects. I never, I never had problem or with getting an erection or anything like that i mean that was really no problem when i was on steroids but uh, even now i don't Wh feel why are we having this discussion i, I, I don't know why we're having this discussion either and i know you guys played uh, some powerhouse like the brass gun got <laughs> killed right, let go let go year. of that Adam. not this season maybe not last season but i'm talking about like five years ago right. it's going to drive me nuts now but what is your question patrick well, my question was, I mean, what are the long-term effects? I mean, what am I going to be experiencing? Am I one how long? One day? How long were you on them? About two and a half years. Right, all the time? The whole time? Yeah. Yeah, you all year cycle? round. Year round. Yeah. Well, year round. Uh, is there a family history of alcoholism? Oh, yeah. Okay, so what happens? Is steroid. You can you can charge up the the reward systems if you have the genetic predispositions for alcoholism, just the way you can with other drugs. It, steroids could do the same thing as stimulants, typically the same thing as cocaine, same thing as speed. So that addictive process, that addictive biology, is sort of activated by it. So you may find yourself sort of in, with momentum towards substances, momentum towards thrill-seeking behaviors, feeling kind of desperate at times to help regulate feelings that you don't seem to be able to regulate without extern externalizing, without getting things from the outside to make yourself feel better. Now, right now, you're sort of getting into working out excessively and eating you know, strangely, and that may be all part of this. It may be a separate disorder. Be that as it may, this is all stuff that is going to progress and really does need treatment. Uh, I, I would suggest that you do see someone about this because it's going to trouble you for quite some time and going to be, in all probability, you will switch over to something else in the not-too-distant future. All right, let's uh, move ahead. And uh, really, I'm going to get an answer to this uh, Cal Poly schedule. Who are we talking to here, Drew? I was trying to push up line one. Well, there we go. He Ooh. just did a wonderful job. There she is. <gasps> Drew, you oh, just no. you, you hung up on her. What, oh, she was suicidal? What was her problem, oh, Drew? Nice. Drew doesn't like to talk to them. Too. A liability, he says, off the air. Addie. Addie, you're 16. Hi, how you doing? What's up? Well, um, I was talking to my girlfriend tonight, and she said that she was no longer physically attracted to me. Mm. That's uh, bad times. Yeah. <laughs> Did she say why or what that means or why? Well, I'm just wondering, like... Well, it means we're breaking up. Yeah, that's the hey, Wait one second, okay? Yeah. I've been waiting to talk to the radio for like half hour. What? I'm on the radio, dad? okay? <laughs> oh, Dad. I will, okay. Bye, Dad. Sorry about that. All right. Yeah, um... Hey, just one second, Eddie. Remember that call we had that one night when the girl was talking about her uh, proclivity for anal sex? Yeah. And her mom walked in? Right. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> it really makes it all worthwhile. It's one like, fifteen year old talking about <laughs> anal sex in front of their parents makes it all yeah. worthwhile for me. Oh. Yeah, good night, mom. I love you. It's like, oh my god. Anyway, back oh, to uh, water soluble <laughs> cornhole lubes. <laughs> Addie. Yeah. Uh, when your girlfriend or anybody says they're not physically attracted to you anymore, it really means they're saying we're breaking up. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought too. But 
Yeah. She seemed to talk a lot about how she still wanted to be with me. No. And then I started uh. thinking about blind people. You know how sure. they can't see each other? Hold on a Good second. Time. Hold on. You're going too fast now. <laughs> oh, my blind God. Blind people. Yes. What was the second part? Well, they can't see each other. Can't see each other. So I was thinking, there's got to be something else than physical attraction. Right, Addy. Yeah, quite, quite an insight, Addy. That's, that's yeah. shocking. It's, yeah. I'm, 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 yes, yes. Uh, you, you, you should be Nobel Prize in the future for you, <laughs> Addy. What, what junior college will will you be attending in the fall? You're not going to try to blind your girlfriend, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Well, my mom works at one, so I'm thinking at a, jun- at a junior college. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You're a legacy. <laughs> you're in for sure. Even though they don't turn anybody away, you're really in. <laughs> okay, so, so I think your girlfriend was breaking up with you. Yeah. And I think the more you talked about it, the more, you know, sort of backpedaling and uh, damage control she was doing. But really yeah. what that means is is we're breaking up. Right. She so try to preserve, try to save your feelings, salvage your feelings and things, but no. Yeah, no. yeah and you know how people are. They break up. It's not the best way to break up with someone, though. Just break up. Yeah, yeah. The more you talk, the more they get into that. Oh no, I still think you're a great guy, and I don't see any reason why we couldn't spend time together. But there's a certain bottom line here, which is she wouldn't have brought that up unless she wanted out. Brian says he has an answer to my uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo Nebraska on the schedule assertion. Brian, yeah, what's up? What do you know? What do you know about Cal Poly San Luis? San Luis uh, it, was, it wasn't Cal Poly. It was a uh, UOP that used to play in Nebraska like well, a few years ago. You talking about Pacific? Yeah, you ever yeah, up in team. Yeah, I no, still, no, he's talking about a Big Ten or a Pac Ten team or something. I'm talking about Cal Adam Poly. San Luis Obispo playing, but remember, like five or six years ago, and uh, UOP would play them to get the you know the big when they had the football program going. Yeah, and they had okay. To get their money. That, but oh, hold on a second. Who cares? <laughs> That's what I love about this show. Here's what the screen says. Uh, line two, Brian knows the answer to the college football question, which yeah. was. Nebraska didn't play the team you said it played, but here's another team they played. <laughs> <laughs> While well, I can sleep tonight knowing that Nebraska had somebody on their schedule. <laughs> yes. Yes, they did. And uh, low line three here says uh, they play Oklahoma as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Do I have to talk to them? people here know a lot no, about football? No, I just, I just want the answer to what big... Big, uh, big eight or big, big ten or uh, Pac ten team that uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo would get crushed by year after You're year. You sure there is one in years past? Yes, I know. Even though I was talking to a guy who played for he the team, that, I still, I right. still believe in myself, Drew. Yeah, you got a, you got a question. You want to talk up? to that guy on three? All right, I was making somewhere. that up. Oh, okay, Kim. Yes. <laughs> What's going on? Nothing much. Um, twenty and um. I've been sexually active since I was 16, and I've been on Paxil since then, too, and I've never really been able to have an orgasm. Like, the only one time I did was during anal sex, and that was it. Were you on Paxil at the time? At um, that time? Yeah. I've been on it for, for a really long time, and I tried tapering myself off, and I know that, like, it can have effects on your sexual libido. Oh, but, big time. Yeah, but I just... Like I'm, I can get aroused, but I can. I don't know if it's like a psychological thing too. Cause no, 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 no. Look, the Paxil suppresses people's ability to have orgasm. You got to talk to your doctor about maybe adding Wellbutrin or switching to Serazone, something like that, or something, something. Yeah, it, I just because I, the Paxil makes it extreme. The fact that you even have libido at all on Paxil is sort of remarkable. Yeah. But, well, you had one through anal, right? Yeah, and that was yeah, and so like. My boyfriend thinks it's really frustrating and so forth. He, and he always teased me. He's like, oh, maybe I should prescribe you um, some Viagra. I'm like, shut up. Leave me alone. Well, that, that is something that actually some doctors kind of try. It's not yeah. been actually approved for that use yet, particularly not in women. But uh, okay. it's it's certainly a, something someone might want to consider. What I usually do is add Wellbutrin or switch to Sarazone Wellbutrin. Something yeah, like well, that. I just, I don't like, because I work in a pharmacy, I don't like being drugged up. And I, for a long time, I tried tapering off Paxil so I could... But I couldn't sleep at night, and my anxiety level was just so high. And well, how did you taper? I would taper like I would do like fifteen for like two weeks, ten for two weeks, and then I went. I got down myself to like five, 
for a while, and then I just I couldn't sleep anymore without some help from like Dalmain. Mm-hmm. There, there, there is a withdrawal center from Paxil. It's, it's yeah, not a dependency, I, I, but there's a. Well, wh- there's why'd you taper off the anal? Is my question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, there's there's where the orgasm is. Well, because it was just this one guy I was dating in Boston, and he wanted to try it, and I never did it before. So I said, "Oh, okay, okay I'll, I'll yeah. try it one time." But no, I don't. I don't think my boyfriend's really too big on it, and I'm not too big on it really. I, I just tried it once, and I, I thought it was okay. I mean, I had an orgasm, but that was the only time I can recall it. Mm-hmm. Well, you're one for one with the anal. That's all. I'm not pushing <laughs> the. An- I'm not pushing the anal. You understand? I'm just saying. I think you are. You're one for one. <laughs> all right, Drew. Where are we going now? We're going over to five. Jonathan. Yeah. You're 18. Yeah. What's up? Um, I can get an erection fine, mm-hmm. but just like when my me and my girlfriend change positions, like I can lose it in like two seconds flat. Are you, are you on medication? No, I'm not on any medication. Yeah, are, you, are you real? Are you nervous when you're with your girlfriend? No, not really. So once your penis hits the open air, it loses the erection. Yeah, like it just shrinks. <laughs> and you can't get it back. Oh, I can. I can get it back, but it just like kills the mood. All right. Well, maybe you shouldn't switch positions. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, cause like she wants to try different positions all the time. I see. That's her. Her thing. Yeah, but how, how long are you guys doing this before you try to switch positions? Is it a long time? Um, you understand what I'm asking, Adam? Like five minutes into one position. Five minutes, okay. It will switch to a different one. You know, why, I, I, think, I think if this is going to happen, you're going to have to just, uh, you know, spin the position wheel and whatever it lands on, that's the one you ride out for the entirety of that sexual session. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, also, how long have you been with her? Uh, about three months now. You, you, you can work it out. Are you using condom? Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's Is tough it? to get it. Now, what happens when you lose it with the condom? The condom falls off? No, the condom stays on. It's like I'm sitting there just, you know, it's hard. myself. Before. It's hard to get yourself going with the condom on, though, right? Do you lose it when you put the condom on? No. Well, yeah, like I can get aroused and then when I'm going to put on the condom on, it starts to go down. Yeah, I say. Yeah. He just has, you know, some guys' penises are very particular. Allergic to condoms? They're temperamental. Temperamental, temperamental yeah. penis. Yeah, they, they, they really are. They, they're, they're, they're sensitive to many things. Sound and light and temperature. <laughs> <laughs> subjects, certain subjects. They're like old people. <laughs> they just, they don't do well. They're too hot, they're too cold. They're, they're not hardy penises. <laughs> I could slam my penis in a cab door and not have any problem with it. I, I, I've actually done it a few times. I have a cab door in my in my bedroom now, Drew. Just for laughs? Just to slam my penis in. Your comedy has finally devolved to this point? <laughs> yeah. Hey, honey, want to watch you do the cab door trick again? No, not again. Jake, again. Jake, you're 16. Yeah, um, me and my girlfriend have been going out for like a month. And like, I took her home like after school one day. And I, like, was kissing her, and her dad walked out and told me to get my tongue out of his daughter's mouth. Uh-uh. And, like, since that day, I've talked to her, like, once. That happened, like, two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Wait, now, where were you kissing her? Was it just kissing goodnight on the doorstep? No, it was, like, after school. and even goodnight. It was just, like, I was just taking her home. And yeah, oh, were, you just, were you, were you compl- totally making out with her in their kitchen or something? No, I was on her doorstep. Yeah, we were, like, yeah, pretty We were pretty into it, dude. All right, so you, dad, 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 it's a little, a little tough for Dad to see that first time, you know? But it was like, thing? Yeah, Drew has a, a shotgun filled with rock salt right in the umbrella container, right by the front door. There, don't Wait, you? I, I, listen, I've, I've got it in the umbrella, like, you know, the Avengers. Like the, like the penguin. That's right. The poison gas in that thing. That's right. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the Avengers. I have the doorstop uh, booby-trapped, in fact. Uh, the hatchet falls down. <laughs> Right. No, I, uh, I, I can understand how a dad can be a little sensitive to that. I think, I think the advice applies here to what we often say to people that are having difficulty with parents, which is spend more time around them, let them get to know you for you. Well, she hasn't talked to him. Yeah, like, I can't even talk to her. Like, so, like I Because of call. dad. I try to call yeah. him, he's like, oh, call back later, and I'll call back later, and he, I mean, he won't let me talk to her. Do you go to school with her? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, I do. you at school? Yeah. 
All okay, right. what happens when you see her at school? Does she talk to you? Yeah, we talk, like at school stuff. You said like, you talked to her once in the last two weeks. Well, I've, I've talked to her in the last two weeks, like at school stuff. But I mean, like after school and like on the weekends and stuff, I want to go do stuff and she can't do anything. Well, that's... I. This guy's such an idiot. Um, you're going to have to work that out with her. If she's a willing... I mean... She don't sound like she's very much in love with Big Jake over here. Does That's she? what I think. No. I mean, we all know from this show where there's a will, there's a way. Oh, yeah. Especially with teenagers and uh, hormones and sex and all that good stuff. If she was <laughs> really into this guy, she would figure out a way. Am I right? They'd be talking. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, she'd be, Absolutely. she'd be saying, listen... My dad is going out of town this weekend. My dad goes to work from this hour to that hour. I'm going to tell her. I'm going to tell him Friday night. I'm going over to Tammy's house, and I'll meet you over at your house. He'd work it out. They'd be making out at school under the bleachers. Well, what made yeah. them think they wouldn't get caught on the doorstep anyway if the dad's home? Well, I, I don't. Well, I don't gone. even care. Yeah, I don't care. Gone. Drew, do you care? I care, but we're taking a break. No, you don't care. You I care. care. You care about not having any non-dairy creamer in Seattle. That's what. You oh, by the about. way, uh, the people here at, at the Buzz were offended, and they him running in here with uh, mini moves, half and half uh, uh, containers. Good. Fantastic. All right. When we come back, Drew, who yeah. are we going to talk to? The twenty-two-year-old virgin. Yes. We are simpatico, brother. He wants to know if this is normal. We'll be back to make fun of John and his <laughs> uh, unscathed penis after this. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew over there in Seattle. Yep. Hey, phone number 1-800-LVE-191. Christian Duguay is our guest tonight from Mad TV, Hello. 11 o'clock, Saturday nights on Fox in its sixth season. Okay, let's speak to uh, John, who's 22, still a virgin. John? Hey, fellas. What's happening? Not much. Um... I guess I want to start by saying that I'm, you know, content with being a 22-year-old virgin. Like, I don't have a problem with it. No, but I guess I'm just looking for, like, a professional opinion. Well, I, you're Adam, fine. I have an impression already. Y yes. Yeah, John, you're fine. Your balls are mad as hell, though. <laughs> I'd like to talk to them, get the other side of the story. <laughs> All right. Uh, you, what, what is, you think he's gay, what is your, Yeah. Really? Well, I just wonder. I'm asking him if that's maybe part of the problem here. I was thinking. I was thinking you guys going to ask that question. No, I really don't think I am. I mean, Drew's um, spidey sense starts tingling once in a while, and he's usually right. Well, no, I could be wrong, but I just had to ask that question. Is are, are you attracted to men? No. Are you attracted to women? Yes. Are you religious? No. Um, I was waiting for that question too, but no, I'm not. Does your work involve any kind of writing? Writing. I'm going to flip over all the car cards. We'll get Ar Arlene Francis out here. Um, y Christian, you got a guess? You want to keep guessing? Oh, <laughs> uh, do you want to have sex? Yeah. Well, okay. Um, you know, I've dated girls or whatever, and I've um, been physical with girls. I've just never had intercourse. And mm -hmm. there's been two chances in the past where I easily could have had sex, but I just decided I didn't think it was right. Hmm. Um, I figured it would have changed. What do you mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Like, just with the, with that particular girl, um, I didn't want to get that close to her at that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I guess it sounds funny coming from a guy. No. No, 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 no. But you know what I'm saying? I was just like... Absolutely. Yeah, so I just didn't feel comfortable. Well, maybe you just haven't found the right person yet. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what it is. But, I mean, I always hear everybody, oh, I lost my virginity, 15, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I figured, okay, I'm kind of a late bloomer, but, you know, I'm 22, I'm almost 23. It's kind of getting late here, isn't it, fellas? Or, well, here's, here's the deal. There are, you know, your average guy loses it at, I don't know, 16 and a half. Yeah. And you're at the high mark. I mean, you're, you're up there. Yeah, I, yeah. That's but, why. but, but, er, er, you, you need a high and you need a low. You, yeah. you, you just happen to be the high. I mean, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I'm so thankful yeah. for those people who, who get cancer. It's like, well, if a certain percentage of society has to get cancer, thanks for getting it. Uh, <laughs> now I'm off nice. the hook. Right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, isn't that how it works, Drew? Do that's the math. That's how it works. Yeah. Well, Doing the math. 10% of guys get laid before the age of 14, and 10% of guys get laid after the age of 20, and then there's the rest of us. Okay. Right. You just happen to be up on the top end of that curve. Okay. 
So do you think I have any kind of like attachment thing or? Well, there's definitely some issues, but if if you're not gay and you're good to go, you just have to meet the right person. Okay. Do you think yeah, you I can think meet that, the right person? See, that's just it. I've never really had a long relationship. Like, what's the longest? Um, five weeks, maybe five or six weeks. What do you do now? What do I do? I'm, I'm a full time student. All right. Mm. Well, you should be able to meet chicks at school. Yeah. yeah, we're just more concerned that you're not having relationships. That, that's the I, if that's the issue that you're not able to form the uh, a stable intimacy, and that's why you can't progress to the point that you're comfortable having sex. Sort of a, a more global issue of uh, your relationships. Did you, did you lose somebody when you were young? Parent, mother die or something? Lose somebody? Uh, no, no, not really. Your relationship with your mom and dad have been stable, and they've been okay. Um. Well, no, my mom got divorced when I was like three or four. And dad? So I've dad's been pretty much out of the picture. Almost 100%. I've been mm. completely raised by my mom almost. And yeah, what's she like? What's my mom like? Um, yeah. Pretty cool. Um, really uh -huh. really steady lifestyle, I guess. And what, what'd you say? All right. Matt, listen, I, I don't see a problem here. All right. You just meet somebody and get laid. He's got to start right. boozing, too. Yeah, you should really start boozing. I don't recommend <laughs> that to too many people who call the show. Maybe only 35 to 40%. But here's a guy who's 22, he's a little uptight, he's at college. Go out and crack, you know, go to a kager. <laughs> Have a, get a few beers in you and, you know, throw yourself at some chick. <laughs> Paula? Yeah? Well, that's how it works. <laughs> Do what everyone does. <laughs> Do what everyone does. It's, it's called date rape. Come on. Paula? Yeah? You're 17. What's up? Correct. Um, well, okay, the thing is, is, like, I've had a lot of sex since I've been young, and I just feel that if... I have to, if I'm going to be with a guy, did I have to have like sex with him for him to like me more and for him to want to stay with me? But that, that's often the way people think that, that are sort of sex and love addicted and or sexual compulsives. Women particularly. M men are just sort of get down that arousal path and they just can't get off it. Women tend to be looking for sex and love through sexual contact. I know. It's, it's like if I don't, if I'm not like having sex or if I like, if a guy, if I'm with a guy and he wants to, he like doesn't want to have sex, I want to have sex with him. And then it, like, pushes him away because I'm so, I want it so bad, I guess. Well, Paula, has it worked out for you so far? No. I have no well, luck there, with guys whatsoever. Well, there you go. And it, it, it almost makes, you know, I try to stay away from guys, and then I want sex, so I have to go to them again. Uh, uh, yeah. So can yeah, you, were you sexually abused when you were younger? Yes, I was. Yeah. Well, there so, you go. This is that. This is that. Uh, this is sexual compulsivity, and... Uh, uh, unless you're ready to do some treatment with that, you're going to continue on this same sort of treadmill. See, but the thing is, is I've tried to go to counseling for it. Mm -hmm. And I I was in counseling from the age 10 to 13. And I stopped Good. going. And then I got into some trouble. And it, I can't talk to people anymore. It just it makes me so uncomfortable. Well, well which is gonna, more uncomfortable? You, yeah, you're going to have to. I yeah, mean, which is more uncomfortable? The, the road you're going down with relationships or sitting down and talking to somebody for an hour a week? I... I it's it's hard both ways. That's the only thing is I don't know yes. which way I should yes. go to help myself out. Better. All right, but you, the, you know, the, you know, other, Paula. Okay. Yeah, one well, one has an has a light at the end of the tunnel. The other is non-ending and actually progressive in a downhill direction. And I understand that it feels bad in both directions. I, I understand, or you would do it mm -hmm. if, if that people will follow a path of least resistance. If it felt good to go talk to a therapist, yeah, I'm sure that's what you'd do. But it's hard work. But it is the only way out. And it's like if I go tell a therapist that because I, I have drug problems also, and if I go tell them that, they go and tell my mother that, and then it just starts more problems. Uh, they're not going to tell your mother. They have. <laughs> my, I had a counselor. I was in jail, and I had a counselor tell my mom absolutely everything I told her. While when you're you were how old? I was when 17. I just got out of jail. And nice. they told my mom everything. They told my mom I had a cocaine problem and everything. While you're in, in, in the can, huh? Yeah, it, Hey, can you do coke when you're in, in the jail? No. No? No, and see, the thing is, is I went to Colorado, and it all happened in Colorado, and they called my mom on the phone to tell her everything. On the that phone? That I needed to go to rehab, and that I needed counseling, and... It's all was, true. Huh? It's all true. <laughs> hey, Paula. Yeah? Do you think you're being framed, or are you doing a bunch of blow and sleeping with a ton of dudes? But it's, that's the thing, is when I did blow, is I didn't even sleep with dudes then. That's when I had my. That was I was with a girl, and that's when I was oh, hanging out Paula, with a girl. Paula. You need to spend a year in a program. Seriously, you need to spend a year in a in a, in a highly structured, sober living with women only. 
that's where you need well, to be right Well, now. I don't know about women. Uh, see, no, and that's women the problem, only. too. Well, I mean, like, you like women, right? Yeah. With raccoons only. <laughs> Do they have an outreach program for raccoons <laughs> or staffed by raccoons? Uh, I mean, you'll have sex with anyone, right? Not anyone, but... but any sex. Yes. E right, even Drew sex? Well, in Drew sex. Well, that's, <laughs> that's the third one. Raccoon, raccoon. I don't know about that, no. That's, All right, Paula. You, you, the, the, uh, I'm sorry for for uh, what was done to you growing up, the molestation. But you are a mess, honey. And I know, and you're not going to make it to 19 at this rate. You have to throw yourself on the mercy of the court, your mom, the counselors, everything, and yep. get yourself some help. There's only one way out. That's it. Yeah, there's only, that, that's the truth. That's it, Paula. That is the truth. I mean, you called the show. This is what we're telling you. Oh, this is why, this is why I want the guys to do the molesting to be shot. Why? Because they create Paula, and now it's a lifelong. And they, Paula would have been better off if this guy just cut her leg off. Yeah. Oh, way better off. Way mm -hmm. better off. She'd be fitted with a prosthetic and off to college mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Well, her problem would be clear. Yeah, and it wouldn't even be a problem. She'd be walk. She would have learned to use her little prosthetic limb. Be wearing uh, slacks. No one would know the difference. She'd be running marathons each year, <laughs> and happy. Now look at her drugs. Uh, you know her her sexual compass is spinning around like it's in the devil's triangle. Uh, you got to get help, Paula. Ashley. Hi. You're 19. What's going on? Well. First of all, I just want to say I love you, Doctor Drew, and I wish you weren't married because I think you're so sexy. He does. No, oh, Ashley. Uh, after, no, just, after, after Polly just told me, after Adam just called me, uh, what, sexless or the, third sex? No, the third sex. You're so smart and intelligent, and you just, ah, oh, you're just wonderful. That's all a rant. Wow. No, I'm serious. I totally adore you. Thank you. Anyways, I just bought a vibrator a couple days ago. Is it shaped like Drew? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. You take the glasses off before you put it in you? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Anyways. <laughs> I was wondering if, um, if vibrators, if you use them too often, do they desensitize you? I mean, they do, but you, you, they do. They desensitize you in the short term, but you, you'll, you'll be back. Drew doesn't, even, like Drew doesn't even know when he's going number two anymore. He's so desensitized. <laughs> 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 yeah, they can scramble your clitoris, sure. Okay. You'll get used to it, and then, you know, the normal penis is, uh, you know, the one that God intended to, you to yeah. be porked with is yeah. not it's not gonna it's not gonna r rise to the occasion so it, why don't you just use it once in a while like eight times a week <laughs> what how how often are you on it now i just use it like three times i just bought it like four days ago yeah but how, uh, did you but how long did you use it for oh well uh the first couple times it was just like for maybe 10 minutes but like 15 well you know i mean it's it takes, you know, a while to warm up. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Are, are, you, are you okay otherwise? Yeah. I've only had sex a couple times before, and I never had an orgasm, but I don't know. He wasn't, you know, I don't know. And, but, um, and you have the orgasms with the vibrator. Um, close. Very close to it. Very, oh, very close. close to it? Well. What's it going to take, baby? I don't know. We'll get one Start of those, upgrading. We got to rent one of those soil compactors that they, uh, the things that hop around on the <laughs> little hammer. They run off a of Briggs and Stratton three horsepower. Well, I don't know. Once, once I got like really close to where I felt like I was about to, and then I just kind of stopped after a little bit. That that is a uniquely female experience. Yeah. Wouldn't you say, Adam? Yes. Yes. I push through. That's right. You women, <laughs> you have no discipline. This well, is why you don't make good <laughs> football players. Thank you for bringing that up, Drew. It's that almost thing. This is why thing. we're better soldiers and better football players and triathletes, because we break through. Because we, we, we can keep pushing. <laughs> yeah, oh, sure. I've, I've had it happen to me a million times. Calf cramps, low on fluid, drunk as hell. Don't think I'm going to get one off that night. Still happens. Never say quit, though. <laughs> Never say die. I, I, I just hum the theme from Rocky. <laughs> that, put, that put you through? I uh, s spread that uh, tube sock out. Actually, I'll use two of them in a sort of train track pattern across my belly and uh, just go to town. That's your right. inspiration. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Thank you. Millions of uh, young I thought Americans. You filled the, I thought you always filled the tube stocks. I didn't know you. 
Fill them? Tube socks. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Interesting. That's a that's a that's probably a better better way to look better way to approach it. Yeah, it's, you've been using a tube sock for thirty years and never occurred to you. Well, it's it's always a new nice. tube sock, though. You understand? I see. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Lindsay. Yeah. You're eighteen. Mm. What's that? That oh, voice. You got that girl voice. I do. Ooh, <laughs> that's trouble. No, I wasn't molested or anything. All right. <laughs> All right. What's up? Oh, well, I've been listening to you guys for so long. <laughs> You guys are rad. Thanks. I have two things to say. Um, actually, one question. Um, I heard that from a friend that, like, um, that if he, because, like, I've been going out with my boyfriend for a while, and um, I, he always, we didn't use a condom one time, and he pulled out before he ejaculated, and she was saying there's, like, pre-ejaculation. Yes. And I'm just, <laughs> like, he thinks he didn't come, and it's, like, they were, It like, doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. If somebody, if a, if a, partner puts his penis in you, you can get pregnant. Period. And that's when you should use morning after pill. Yeah. That is one of the things it is designed for. You understand what the morning after pill is? Yeah. yeah. Well, especially okay. if he's a leaker. Yeah, well, even non-leakers can leak enough to cause problems. Not yeah. me. I'm no leaker, Drew. <laughs> I know you have tight gaskets. Very tight. Very tight seals and O-rings. Yeah. Uh, is, your, is your boyfriend a leaker? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> well, I mean, you ever you get moral sex? Yeah. You ever get a little little taste of the semen while no, you're down there? No. 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 Uh, you... I don't think. He is. <laughs> I'm just like worried when she told me that. <laughs> but um, okay, so yeah, I I need to go. Like, I want to go to Planned Parenthood sometime this week and get on something. <laughs> Good, but uh, when when did this happen? Did he um, pull out? This was just Thursday. Thursday, so it's a little bit late to take the morning after pill. So, yeah. okay, we'll get in there and get on some real contraception, okay? Okay, and uh, also one more thing. Um, yeah. Dude, every time I listen, I've like always waited for you guys to have Dave Matthews on. What's up with that? Yeah, where is Dave dude. Matthews? Yeah. I'm going to his show in May. I'm like stoked on that. You guys should have him on. Okay, for um, you? Yeah, just for me. We'll have him in... Um, well, hey, man, Christian, you got to get out. We're going to bring Dave in for All the right. last 15 minutes of the All show. Right. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and begin thawing Dave Matthews. We have him, uh, we have him suspended in animation <laughs> in, uh, in Lycus' office. We'll be bringing him in. Uh, actually, producer Ann has worked on Dave Matthews a few times. Have you, have you not, producer Ann? And there's uh, some story with him? Yeah, I've been working on him for a couple of years now, and basically I'm not really getting a good answer. Just no. Yeah. Mm. I wonder, I, I, did, does he have, is there some part of his sexuality that he'd like to keep under wraps or something? It is there an that issue with that? every interview I read of his, he'd be amazing on the show. Right. Mm. And right. just, they just say no. But is he Man. gay? He's bisexual. <laughs> is he bisexual? Mm. He's something. Isn't he something? Isn't that the story with Dave Matthews? Ann, you're well, saying you, no? Asking? I'm asking producer Ann. You never heard anything like that? No. No? He's straight as an arrow? That's what I've heard. Oh, no, no. I've, I've heard things. Not that it makes a difference. I mean, we can make fun of him and stuff, but I've heard stories. You, you, you hear anything? Anderson, you know anything? Oh, she? Anderson, do you, have you ever heard he was bi? Nothing. No, all right. I thought that was sort of common knowledge. Maybe I'm just making that up. Like, thought. you thought he was bi yeah, too, yeah, right? I've heard, I've heard. Yeah. Well, not from reliable sources, but I mean. No, I just thought it was sort of like a, a lot of like 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 a, Matthews, like, a, like a given. Yeah. Like you know, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo playing yes, Nebraska every year. That is a given. Year. That is a given. Right. Nebraska. Got to get to the bottom of that. Oh wait, we got to take a break. We got it. Yeah. Shauna. Yeah. You're 20. Yeah. You're a graffiti artist? I'm not. My boyfriend is. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. That's it. All right. And you have a question about his health? Yeah, kind Hold of. Hold on. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get to the bottom of this and uh, find out about this uh, graffiti, this so-called graffiti art. We'll take a little break. We'll be back with Shauna and her boyfriend after this. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew over there. Christian DeGay is our guest tonight for Mad TV. Hello. Sixth big season. Fox, Saturday nights, 11 o'clock. And we'll get back with Shauna. Shauna? Yeah? Boyfriend's a graffiti artist. Yeah. How does yeah. that work? 
Um, well, uh, first of all, like, first of all, I don't know. Um, we've been together for five years, and he's been doing graffiti for about double that before. You know, he's been t- doing that for about ten years, I guess. And he does it, like, three times a week, maybe at the most, you know. Maybe where where does he do it? Um, it depends. Usually, like, usually he'll go out at night and just paint wherever, you know, big, nice pieces. He's a tattoo artist now, but um, hmm. mainly that's he, he's bumped off just from the graffiti, you know. And it, do people leave him alone if he's doing well, artistic San stuff? San Francisco's pretty laid back as far as the police force is concerned. Um, they usually let him go. Um, you know, maybe write you a ticket or something like that. It depends, you know. Right. But, um... I don't know, he usually wears a respirator, but for like five years, you know, he probably didn't wear a respirator in the very beginning, and that's when he was a lot younger. He's 25 now, and he has slight asthma, and it's probably because of that, but we used to smoke a lot, too, so I don't know, it's probably, you know, from that So what, what is your question, actually? Well, I just want to know, like, what x and it says danger, avoid contact, things like that on the back of a can, and I'm wondering what that can, you know, permanently do or damage. Well... They're mostly where it's the inhaled hydrocarbon that can damage the frontal lobes of the brain. And it's that's it's the not issue. it's not the lungs as much well, the as lung, it is lung, the brain. The lung can be an issue, and the continued irritation can cause chronic bronchitis. And be smoking on top of that, clearly, this can be an issue. But the things people worry about is the inhaled hydrocarbons effect on the brain. Okay. Well, he's a tattoo artist and a graffiti artist, so he doesn't need his brain. There you go. <laughs> Oh, really? Good good times. Yeah, good times. <laughs> oh, good. Well, is there any test he should take? Like, uh, he should have. He should be seen by a doctor because think about, uh, about asthma and airway problems is it can lead to emphysema if it isn't properly controlled. So it is important that he get looked at. All right. Let's talk to Sarah, who's 19. Sarah? Hi. Hey. Um, I just wanted to know that how do you tell someone that you've been with for like two years um, that you're going away to college. He's really um, a clingy person, and he's just—he seems to be kind of obsessed with me. <laughs> yeah. um, Chicks he, love clingy, by the way. <laughs> Make a note of that. Great. All you for a that's, great that's, relationship. All you young guys who listen to the show, write that down. <laughs> right on the inside of your palm. Be needy. They love <laughs> clingy. Yeah, that's what attracted me to him, and that's. Oh, she's you know, being facetious, sir. <laughs> That seems to be the relationship I end up All right. In. Well, you're going away to college. Should tell him that. Well, I have told him, and he said basically that if I go, then that we're over. Well, okay. So that's, that's it. That's you you kind of want it to be over, don't you? Um, no, and yes. Yes. Yeah, What's on. the no part? <laughs> you just don't want to deal with the pain of the ending. Yeah, he's just really, I'm afraid of actually hurt. I mean, I'm really afraid of hurting him, and... Here's the, here's the way you have to do this. You can do it in two parts or three parts. Go away to college. Promise you'll keep things up and keep things going. Then you go away. You call a few times. You send a few letters, but they become less and less frequent. Then you meet somebody. Then it's over. But at least it's sort of broken off into two or three parts. Yeah. Right. It's, 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 you, know, you break up on the installment plan. It's not right. one big balloon payment right at the top. That's fine. She's away at college. It, yeah. it, it, will, it will come to bear. Kathleen? Yeah. You're 25? Yeah. What's up? Oh, God. I think that um, I took the wrong prescription drugs last night together. What'd you take? Um, Zoloft. I took like a muscle relaxer. And on top of that, I've been taking antibiotics. What was muscle relaxer? Well, let let we we only have a couple minutes, so why don't we do this a more efficient way? Tell us what you didn't take. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the muscle relaxer? I wasn't taking anything like ecstasy or anything like that. I see. What so was the muscle relaxer? It was just a muscle relaxer. And, what was um, the muscle relaxant? I don't know. My friend just gave it to me last well, night. Who, know, who prescription? knows what that was? Okay. It so that could have been anything. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling really tweaked out, like I just did a bunch of speed or something. Okay. Well, good times. You'll be fine. Because my, um, my eyes keep on, like, dilating, undilating, dilating, and undilating. Yeah. Yeah. What should she do, Drew? <laughs> I've been trying to, like, drink tea, drink water. You need to find out what you took. Why don't you ask your friend what you took? Yeah. But meanwhile, and, uh, Drew, can she just, you know, hydrate herself and take, take a nap? Yeah, I, I would call a doctor prescribing the Zoloft, for sure. For sure. Okay? Yeah. Well, what could happen to her now, Drew? 
Well, it depends. There's something called a serotonin excess syndrome you can take from Zoloft. It actually can kill you. And usually it, it's while you're under the influence of these various drugs. And But I don't know what she took. All right, I, mean, well, advice, I, I bet you. I understand uh, you want to cover yourself, Drew, but... <clears throat> she's probably okay. It's the next okay. day. Just to drink yourself a gallon of Gatorade and take a nap. Hey, I, Adam, just because you used to work for that organization that, uh, you know, if somebody was dead, that you'd call them to advise you on how to manage the dead person. They'd say throw them in a shower. The Do It what Now was Foundation? Yeah, Do It Now, right. Yeah, my, my buddy Chris took like 150 bootleg quaaludes in a half-baked attempt to kill himself when I was like 22 and he was living in this one bedroom with me and my buddy the wheeze so i called the do it now foundation i was like hey do you think we should take him to the hospital and they're like uh were they uh pharmaceutical or bootleg uh, the guy was baked of- i heard the guy doing a bong load <laughs> he was like hold on <laughs> yeah <laughs> you say it was farms <sighs> so the guy just goes yeah I don't know. Just don't let him fall asleep. Good times. And he hung up <laughs> the phone. Times. So me and the Wheeze uh, drove around the city all night with uh, Chris, uh, keeping him awake uh. Uh, until the uh, sun rose. And then uh, we all passed out, and I missed a day of work. Fantastic. Very nice. All right, we'll take a little break. We'll be back after this. All righty. I'm going to thank uh, Christian for coming in here from Thanks for having me. Mad TV. Our pleasure. Saturday night, 11 o'clock. Drew? Yep. Hey, you got your cell phone over there, Drew? Yeah. Now I'm going to call you when I get off the air. <laughs> I want to talk to you about some cars. I, <laughs> Turn your phone I don't on. Have, I, I don't have that phone. No, come on. Don't BS me, brother. I know when you're lying. Are you seeing... And, or, hold on. Um, are you seeing somebody over there? <laughs> Why are you over there? <laughs> Who are you seeing? I'm I talking swear, to someone. Hey, I'm talking to someone else on my way home. All right. Hold on a second. If the person who's seeing Drew is listening right now, I swear to Christ, as God is my witness, I'll cut your nuts off if I see you. Don't you ever show your face around here because I'll smell <laughs> Drew's ass on you. Do you understand me? And you don't want to F with me, brother. Talk boxing. Okay, Drew. You get the message? Okay. Yeah, I got it. I hear you. All right. So until next time. This I'm Adam, cool. Are you cool? You cool? All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool. cool. As long all as right. we can talk. That's all I ask. <laughs> I don't want to go to bed angry. That was the promise we made five years ago, right? We don't go to bed angry? I'm not angry. Are you? All right. Okay. So until next time, Sam Crawl for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. You can't can't articulate yourself any better than that. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Love Line is Ann Wilkins Engel. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.